It's showtime. Yeah, welcome back to the channel guys. So I was lucky enough to go and caddy for Steve Surrey at the end of last year for free European tour events in South Africa. And as well as just being a really cool experience, I got to learn from the best players in the world exactly how they got it around the golf course, what they did in tournament situation, how they approached tournament golf, and what is actually important in order to score well. So the whole experience completely like changed my perspective of what where it needs to be, what you need to actually do to get to this level. And I want to share with you the three things that I learned, the three, for me, the most important takeaways from the whole experience. And hopefully it can change your perspective and get you scoring better this year. At the end of the day, that's what this channel is about. It's about not only tracking my progress as a pro, but it's also about getting the best sources of information from players, coaches, and just bringing it all to you to, at the end of the day, help you with your game. Now, before we get into the three things, Steve had his best run of European tour events on this trip. So our first event, he finished fourth, which is, I think his best finish, he said before this was 11th. So to go out there, first event, first time on the bag, and for him to finish fourth was like a ridiculous start to the three weeks. And obviously we got to play with some really good players. And throughout the trip, we played with a big variety of players that had their main tour card. And that's the, the takeaways that I've got, the things I'm gonna share with you today are mostly about, are about what I've learned from how to actually get it around a golf course and get to this level. So yeah, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy it. Okay, make it quick because my horse is getting tired. So number one is make it simple and find your shape. Now, in the past, this is something that I've been guilty of, making golf harder than it actually needs to be. So for example, here's a clip of me 120 yards away from the green in Spain, trying to hit a low feathery, faded 50 degree wedge into a front right flag and the end result the ball lands on the front and spins off the green now this was sort of a running joke when i was doing my round reviews and talking about the shots that i was seeing even the guys in the comments were like why are you trying to make this so hard now you've probably seen bubba watson mud ball mud ball now he is one guy that does hit big shapes hits big hooks hits big cuts but he is definitely the exception and not the rule. I watched this thing on Bubba the other day and he said he hasn't tried to draw his driver for like 10 years. So most of the guys on tour had one ball flight and if they did move it, it was very small amounts. So at the end of the day, it's about tightening your dispersion. That is what you're trying to do with your ball striking. So you may think that if there's like a back left pin that they're trying to hit a low drawed seven iron that's gonna like release up the green. If it's a front right flag, they're trying to hit a high cutty seven iron that's gonna sit down. But what you're essentially doing is changing everything, right, with that with that seven iron. So a seven iron hit to a back left flag, obviously hitting down on it more. You're presenting less loft, less spin. The ball speed is gonna change. You're trying to hit a high cutty one into that right flag. You add in loft, add in spin, launch angle changes, ball speed changes. And if you're going from one hole to the next, trying to manipulate all of those things and change so much between two golf shots, how can you actually think? I say like, how can you, but this is mainly me. Like how can you actually think that it's possible to be consistent changing so much from shot to shot? Now, Steve has a very neutral ball flight. I'm sure you've seen from the videos, he'll literally hit like driver with like a one yard draw. Most of the time he's hitting the same golf shot over and over again. And Steve said that as like you're getting into tournament week, he'll get a particular feel, whether that be a swing for or like a feeling, whatever ball flight that he's getting with that, whether that be a cut and he's got to play with it that week, or whether that be a slight little draw that he prefers, that's what he's gonna play with because the feel that he has is he knows a, a certain feel is gonna produce some sort of like predictability within a ball flight. So that is number one. A lot of the guys have very neutral shot patterns and if anything, they play either a fade or a little draw. Cool. Number two, this may seem quite an obvious one, but avoiding the wide ball. God, Tiger. And you may think like, well, obviously they're gonna hit less wide balls because they're better. But you always get like low handicap golfers at your club that rarely hit a wide ball, they hit it straight, mainly because they hit it 220. But throughout the trip, apart from one of the golfers that we played with, who I won't, I won't say who it is, there was literally no noticeable wide balls. Now Steve's obviously someone that does arrow it and he's very consistent. But taking point one, if you've got a more consistent shot shape, you then have a more predictable dispersion, which means that you're less likely to have a big wide. If you're going from shot to shot, right, I wanna play like a 20 yard cut with the driver here, and then the next hole you're trying to like hook a three wood 30 yards, you're literally setting yourself up 
to find those massive big wides where you double cross it, you try and hit a 20 yard cut and you like pull it 15 and then you're in the trees. So having a more predictable shot pattern, hitting less wide balls, you can then, you can then plot your way around a golf course, knowing your shot pattern, knowing your dispersions. And I know like there are obviously times that you turn on TV and you see Tiger hitting like a massive block into the trees. And generally, the longer hitters do occasionally hit more of the like the big wide ones. But the guys that we played with out there, from what I saw personally, apart from one guy, their dispersion and their lack of hitting the big one off the planet was like, ridiculous and then they avoid the big number they can get it around the golf course it's more predictable you can then plan your strategy based around your own shot pattern knowing sort of like where your misses are and then you can sort of go into like the decade system of strategy and stuff which a lot of them use as well but we won't go into that in this video who are you the famous comedian arnold braunschweiger okay number three this one is going to be one that i've got to like explain so number three is they aren't out of this world so I had a few people talk to me before, send me messages before I went away. And the general message was like, you're gonna now see how unbelievable these guys are, like how far above they are and how, how much talent they have and what their ball striking is like. And you, you're just gonna be blown away and how like just insanely good they are. Oh, 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 it looks like a Gerald Ford shot. And obviously, yeah, it's impressive what European tour players do, but it's not impressive in the way that people think it is. So the thing that gets overlooked, right? This is the area that I've overlooked massively in the past as well. The thing that's impressive is the way that they manage their own games and they get it round the golf course, knowing their strengths and weaknesses to actually put a score on the board. And at the end of the day, that is what golf is. So I think people's perception of tour players is that they rarely miss hit it. They flush it every time. They're all, bar a few, they're all really impressive ball strikers. But to be honest, I've played with quite a few guys on the mini tours over the last year that most of you lot would look at and say, that guy is more impressive than some of these guys on the European tour, but they can't manage their game, they can't manage themselves, and that results in not posting the scores that the European tour guys can. Now, obviously you've got exceptions. You've got like your top players, Rory's, your Dustin's, your John Rahm's, who are just out of this world and they are just, like they're not just European tour players, they are the best in the world. They literally aren't on the European tour, they're on the PJ tour. But as a whole, the guys that I saw, and me and Steve have spoke about this a few times, it isn't like uber impressive to watch them hit a golf ball. So impressive ball striking really is having the tightest dispersion. So if you can hit a seven iron and get a tight little grouping, but not look that impressive and not hit it maybe as far as some other guys. That is better ball striking than someone that can swing a seven iron 100 mile an hour, hit it 210 yards, flush it out the middle of the face. Really impressive ball flight, you know, like that fizzy noise off the face. That's what a lot of people think is impressive ball striking, but in reality, it's just like tightening everything up. But that cook it down now. So I found myself out there being drawn because I'm guilty of having a bit of clubbed speed and hitting shot, hitting, being able to hit shots. But I was drawn to the guys that weren't the flushers. They had their own way of doing it and they knew their own game like inside out. And that for me was the impressive thing. Like watching them manage their games, manage their ego, manage their emotions, and simply put, get the best that they could out of their golf game. So that is it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. That is three things that I learned on the European Tour. Those are the biggest takeaways for me. So this year, as soon as we're able to get back out there, I'll be documenting my progress as a pro, hopefully playing a full season this year for the first time. And I will be back out on the golf course as soon as possible, filming some course vlogs. So thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I'll see you on the next one. You are terminated.